This video will focus on controlling ammonia during quarantine. I have noticed that this is becoming more and more of an issue for some. It is not always best practice to reduce ammonia simply by doing water changes. In most cases, it is necessary to utilize biological filtration for ammonia control. I will show you various techniques for accomplishing this. Ammonia exposure is probably the leading cause of fish death in a quarantine tank. What does ammonia do to fish? Really bad things. Even traces of ammonia, less than 0.25 parts per million, will burn irritate a fish's gills. Higher levels of ammonia, greater than 0.25 parts per million, can cause internal organ damage, which oftentimes leads to death. Knowing this, it's very important to keep close tabs on ammonia at all times while a fish is in quarantine. You can use a liquid ammonia test kit, Salifert or Red Sea for example, provided no medications are in the water. Copper in particular can cause inaccurate readings. The only known workarounds for this are the Seachem Ammonia Alert Badge and Hanna Instruments Marine Ammonia Checker, shown on opposite ends of this page. Both will register ammonia even with medications like copper in the water. However, I want to stress that the ammonia badge is not 100% accurate or reliable so I would use it as only a rough indicator for detecting ammonia, which is why utilizing biological filtration in quarantine is so very important. So now we get to the meat of the matter. You wouldn't put fish in an uncycled display tank, so why would you do that in a quarantine tank? Let's make this easy. You only need two things to accomplish having a working biofilter in quarantine, flow and biomedia. Flow can be from a small wave maker, bubbler, or ideally a hang on back power filter as shown at top left. What is biomedia? Biological media is anything inert that provides housing for nitrifying bacteria to break down pollutants, like ammonia, to a less toxic form. It can be something as simple as a sponge filter or glass marbles on the bottom of the tank. However, using a hang on back power filter is much more efficient because you can actually place the media directly into the filter chamber where water passes through it. All of the bio media shown at the bottom, foam inserts, fluval biomax, Seachem matrix, have been tested to ensure they will not absorb copper and other medications. This is the primary advantage they have over using something like a bio brick or ceramic based biomedia. You can also use live rock taken from your display tank for biological filtration. However, any rock should be removed before dosing medications such as copper and subsequently sterilized before reusing in your display tank, just in case the fish in quarantine cross contaminated it. Okay, so now you have your power filter and biomedia inside of it. How do we seed the media with live nitrifying bacteria? There are two ways. One, place it in a high flow area of your display tank sump so that bacteria in the water can transfer onto it. Unfortunately, this takes at least one month with two to three months recommended for optimal usage. Two, Dose of bacteria in a bottle product, as shown here at least one week before adding fish to the quarantine tank. Do so before dosing any medications into the water. However, don't just assume that your media is seeded because you dose bacteria. Test the strength of your biofilter by dosing 2 ppm ammonia into the system. If it is ready for fish, all ammonia and nitrites should be gone within 24 hours. You should only get a nitrate reading. I will post a link to an ammonia calculator in the comment section to help you figure this out. I also advise completely sanitizing and sterilizing your quarantine tank every three to four months because if bacteria levels become too overwhelming, they will start to degrade or decompose all non-copper medications. Remember, so long as you have biomedia stewing down in your display tank sump for two to three months, you can instantly cycle any newly set up quarantine tank. If biological filtration fails to keep ammonia under control, you will have to resort to other measures. 
First, let me state the obvious. Don't overwhelm the bio load of your tank by trying to quarantine too many fish all at once. There's only so much ammonia that any biofilter can process out in a timely manner. Second, don't allow uneaten food and fish poop to accumulate on the bottom of the quarantine tank. You can use airline tubing to target and siphon this stuff out if you don't want to do a large water change. In an emergency, you can use an ammonia reducer, like the one shown here, to quickly neutralize ammonia. However, there are a couple of caveats. Number one, some medications interact negatively with an ammonia reducer. For example, a reducer can only be used with a chelated copper product, such as copper power or copper safe, but never with cupramine or copper sulfate. Always do research or ask before dosing an ammonia reducer into a quarantine tank. Number two, most ammonia reducers only bind ammonia for 24 to 48 hours before releasing it back into the water, so it's just a temporary solution. Ultimately, the best way to remove ammonia is a good old-fashioned water change, so always keep freshly mixed salt water on hand, which matches both salinity and temperature of your quarantine tank. If you are treating with copper, be sure any replacement water gets pre-dosed with copper so that your copper level never drops below therapeutic in the quarantine tank. I realize hauling buckets to the toilet is a pain in the ass, so I will share a link with you in the comments section for a no bucket, no siphon solution that I personally use. Sometimes, despite our best efforts, fish get exposed to ammonia poisoning. This can happen outside of quarantine, sometimes during shipping. If you suspect that a fish has been exposed to ammonia, your best option is to detoxify the fish by giving it a 30 minute methylene blue bath. The bath dosage is one milliliter per gallon of salt water if using a 2.303% methylene blue solution. Repeated baths can be done every 24 to 48 hours if necessary. It is important to match salinity, temperature, and pH of the source water where the fish is coming from and aerate and temperature control the bath water for the entire 30 minutes. If a fish has been exposed to very high ammonia, I recommend doing repeated baths or dosing methylene blue in a quarantine tank at 0.5 milliliters per gallon every 48 hours for at least a week. This needs to be done in a quarantine tank with no biological filtration because methylene blue is harsh on nitrifying bacteria. So at least a 25% water change should be done before each new dosage. Thank you for watching this video. To see more videos like this one and periodic live streams, hit the subscribe button. Also, join us on my forum at humble.fish for all reef aquarium related content.